Hey, this is Healy Jones, VP of Financial Strategy here at Cruise Consulting. And I want to say thanks to our podcast sponsor, ARC. At Cruise, we've got a number of clients successfully using ARC to manage their deposits, payments, access financing, all in one place. One of the things that ARC provides that's really great is over a quarter of a million dollars in FDSE coverage. Their insurance program goes beyond the standard limit and it secures up to five and a quarter million dollars. So startups that have even more cash than that can go and access treasury solutions that provide yield and safety. If you're a startup looking for a secure financial solution that can help you scale, please check out our sponsor, ARC, at arc.tech. Welcome to Founders and Friends Podcast with Scott Orn at Cruise Consulting. And today, my very special guest is Kelly Cavilia of BridgeBank. Welcome, Kelly. Thanks. Glad to be here. Oh, yeah. Well, so we've worked together, been friends for many, many years. I think something like five years, maybe. And you are a great partner for Cruise for our clients at BridgeBank. And so I want to have you on. Maybe just start by retracing your career a little bit and tell us how you landed at BridgeBank. Yeah, uh, my career has been a little interesting. Um, I started my career at SVB uh, in marketing, um, mainly by way of I graduated in the downturn of of the economy. And uh, I was a personal trainer for a little bit until uh, one of my clients said, hey, you're good at telling people what to do. Come work for me. And she worked at SVB. <laughs> I actually studied sport management. So the opposite. I thought I was going to be a sports agent. Um, so I was there for a while. And then... Was that, I, wait, so went personal training to sports agent? Well, I wanted to be a sports agent because okay. I studied sport management. Uh, I was just a personal trainer because it was the downturn of the economy. Yeah. And I needed to find a job. And so that was kind of my, my holding pattern. I worked in a sports agency in college and it, it was not a industry. I got a very close look at it and it was not. Yeah. Now that I'm older and I look back at it, I'm like probably best that I didn't yeah. end up there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, le- I left SVB because I was, uh, you know, in my 20s in San Francisco and thought it would be best to go work for a startup. And I worked for a fitness tech startup uh, from first client all the way through acquisition. Uh, so that was a really good experience, gained a lot of knowledge, which now helps me relate to my clients a lot better. Um, and then after that, I went back to banking. It was a good experience, but I wanted some stability back and was uh, at First Republic for about three years. And then I joined Bridge about two and a half years ago to lead their early stage startup banking practice. Yeah. You've had a really rapid rise at Bridge Bank. Like it's been awesome to watch because all all of a sudden we were just chatting it up last week and you're running the whole, what is it early stage practice or how does it, how does it work? Yeah. We call it startup banking, but yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. So, and in, in we should note that we've had uh, Mike Letterman on a couple of times from Bridge Bank, who really is like more, of, Mike's more of like a venture lender. Um, mm-hmm. So this podcast is going to be focused on the banking services and how you can help the cruise client base. And per, specifically, probably, I'd say it's probably fair to say like the early stage, right? That's that's where you play the most. Yeah. You know, our team focuses on pre-seed, seed stage companies. So anything pre-series A before they really get that larger institution around. Yeah. But I'm sure you you see the same thing we do. You know, helping those companies get things right the first time around is so much better and usually they're pretty grateful and they stick around for a while. So I, I'm, I'm with you on that business model. So maybe maybe highlight, you know, just tell everyone a little bit about BridgeBank and, and sure. where they play in the market and, you know, capital and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So BridgeBank was founded in 2001 in Silicon Valley for focus of working with tech and startups, you know, from acquisition from incorporation all the way through IPO. Um, so really making sure that we're with them for that whole life cycle. Um, our sweet spot has always been venture debt. Now we have, you know, the, the earlier stage side of things where we can be, again, that whole life cycle. Um, in 2015, Bridge Bank was acquired by Western Alliance Bank, which is based out of Phoenix, Arizona. Bridge Bank or uh, Western Alliance Bank has about eight different banks underneath our umbrella. So we all do something very different from each other. For example, Amerihome is one of our sister banks and they focus on home mortgages. We are the, the tech and startup arm of the bank. Um, Western Alliance Bank is about seven, almost $71 billion in assets right now. Wow, uh, big one. Yeah, so um, I think it's in the top 25, which is always constantly changing, of uh, the largest banks in the United States right now. I remember you guys got caught up in some of the collateral damage around SVB and First Republic. And I remember, I think I talked to Mike, actually, and was like, what's going on? And he's like, we don't really get it because we're heavily, heavily diversified. Like, yeah. we do have some startup you know, the startup practice is pretty big, but mm-hmm. relative to the rest of the bank, it's a pretty small piece, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, like I said, eight different brands and banks doing something completely different from each other. And we're the only tech component. of that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's awesome. And you have the benefits of diversification and scale. Yeah, but um, but also you can be very focused on that client base. That's awesome. Yeah. And so you got in where, where do you have like a regional focus or is it, I mean, I've always lived in the Bay Area, so we've always interacted, but you're you're in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in Texas. Um, yeah. I mean, I think we're, we're a little bit more heavily focused on the West Coast just because that's where we originated. Right. So you have like San Jose, San Francisco. We have Seattle offices, SoCal offices. And then, you know, we do have offices, corporate offices, not necessarily branches. Um even on the East Coast, New York, Boston, DC, I'm in I'm in Austin and Denver and, and Chicago. So all the major tech hubs. Um, but at the end of the day, all our clients are remote. So, you know, yeah. it really doesn't matter. I've you know, I've got clients in Michigan and and Idaho. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. That's great. That's great. You can cover everybody. And so then uh, in terms of like you know, how do you, how does, how do you position the early stage practice versus like, you know, some of the, the big, the big banks, the giant banks out there. And then some of the, um, some of the, like the, I don't even know what you call them, like, uh, internet oriented banks. Like a FinTech. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so I think we are uniquely positioned because two things that I, I love about Bridge is we're very relationship oriented. Um, so you have that more strategic vision for the company like as they go forward so when you start early with a bank and as a startup especially if you're a first-time founder i always say like you know do your due diligence and like make a decision that's going to be with you for not only the next like 24 months 12 months and yeah it's easy to get caught up in the instant gratification of like this is easy to, yeah. to onboard but like what just like your business plans that you're creating like what is going to be valuable to me and and supporting my business in two years, five years, like when, when I need debt, does the bank I'm looking at offer debt? What, you know, what, what are, what are those um, requirements that I need to start thinking about? And maybe they don't even know what those questions are, but, you know, talking to their partners like you or their law firms, like it will help give some guidance on that. Um, it's, it's not just debt. It's like cash, sophisticated cash management. Yeah. Uh, foreign well, exchange, of, like, the, yeah. you know, depending on their business model and their needs. And, and I think that also goes back to that strategic relationship, because when you have a banker that you know their name, you know, for us, you have the same team for the extent of your relationship with the bank. So when you start early with us, we're growing with you. So, you know, my name, you know, your, you know, your banker's name and, and, and email address and phone number. And you can call us and say, Hey, I'm about to raise my series a, like, or, you know, I need to set some benchmarks, like what do I need to do for debt to make sense? And we can kind of go through that together. So we have a plan versus scrambling last minute. And I see that a lot with, with early stage founders is scrambling because they all of a sudden realize they don't have the services that yeah. they need. Also, I think the plan thing, especially around debt is really smart because sometimes I, I feel a lot of calls like that where where if they would have planned ahead and maybe like put debt in place when they raise the series a or something like that, yeah. you don't have to draw it down right away, but like just get something in, in place. It would have really helped the company versus like kind of getting, being on the verge of running out of money and then trying to raise debt, which is kind of impossible to do. Yeah. So there's there like, I think I like how you guys have, I mean, I really value the relationship aspect because from an accounting perspective, like being able just to call you or call Mike or other people on the team and be like, Hey, can you help us out here? Or take a look yeah. at this client that that's means the world to us. Cause you just make us more efficient and you help our yeah. clients be successful. That's a, a huge value add, but also the willingness to get on the phone and talk through like something sophisticated like debt or cash management is, is pretty big. You know, that these are big decisions. And oftentimes, especially like founders, oftentimes they're like an amazing engineer or an amazing salesperson and they started this company and this is not, wasn't part of their toolkit, you know, so they need some help on it. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, you know, when we're specifically talking about pre-seed and seed stage founders, especially again, if they're first time founders, they may not even know what venture debt really is yeah. or, yeah. you know, cause they're always like, well, can I get a loan? Cause they're used to cons going to the consumer bank and like, Oh, I get a loan and it's personally guaranteed. And that's not, that's not the case. It's completely different. It's specific to venture backed uh, startups. And, you know, for example, like we had a client and we sat down with them and said, Hey, you're not ready for debt, but here are the, the markers like we would need to see in order for this to work. Yeah. And they went out and six to eight months later, they came back and are like, 
hit all those markers. Like, and so, you know, we were able to get them a term sheet just based on that. I love it. I love it. And then on, in terms of like the tools you offer, the logged in experience, and all that, maybe just can you walk people through, you know, the, the, the things that make you special on that end too? Yeah, I think it, for early stage startups, your banking needs are simple or they should be at that point, right? You, you need a checking, <laughs> you need, you need a checking <laughs> account uh, to hopefully take in some money from investors. You need to pay some bills and some other vendors. And that's probably it. Um, you know, obviously there might be some ex excess cash from investors that maybe you need some um, cash management solutions for. But when we're talking about just the checking account, the first thing that we do is if you are, you know, a startup client pre-seed seed stage, we waive your banking fees on your checking account for the, up to three years. Um, so really making sure that it sounds cheesy, like every penny counts. But in reality, yes. when you're getting charged, you know, two hundred dollars or whatever it is based on your transactions, it, it adds up when you're go trying to grow a business and start from scratch. Yeah, and especially if you're pre-seed or you just got incorporated. Um, so, you know, that's a big one, um, you know, and on that note, if you can deposit $50,000 in the first month and maintain that for three months, we give you a $500 credit back to your account, just oh, as, that's like, awesome. token of goodwill and good luck. <laughs> and, uh, you know, on top of that, any amount that you bring to the bank that you want to set aside for a money market account, we are offering right now, obviously subject to change given the market, uh, like really competitive rates that are uh, right now it's at 5.258. Oh, wow. That's maybe yeah. the highest I've heard of lately. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. And that's on any amount. So, we, you know, we found like, you know, oh, you know, I can only give you $10,000, but I can't find like a good um, cash management solution for, you know, $10,000. And we said, okay, like, let's make sure that you can earn that amount on regardless of how much you have. That's spend. really smart. Yeah. Cause we have clients that have 500 K or a million dollars and 25 or $50 million, you know, so yeah. making it, it's, it all, it's all over the map and we get it and things fluctuate. Yeah. And I think, you know, they're always worried about setting aside large sums, especially in this economy. And so we said, Hey, if you've got $10,000, like you can earn the same amount if you have a million dollars. Yeah. And money market accounts just for everyone, they're pretty liquid. It may take a day yes. or two, but they're very, very liquid. So they're very liquid. Awesome. Like you're, you see them in your online banking portal. You can transfer funds back and forth. So if you need that cash, there's no penalties. You can transfer it to your checking. Yeah. I love, by the way, you touched on something which I really love, which is being able to see it in the portal. Because yeah. there's something about like psychologically just knowing it's there and also not forgetting about it. We we have clients that forget about money in places and it's, <laughs> it's actually a big thing. That's a big problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good problem to have. And then how are you, what are you doing on the expense management side? Yeah, so um, we are integrated with a, a bunch of different platforms like, you know, bill.com and, and others. Um, you know, it's all in our online banking. Awesome. And then you have, you have a credit card. I, yeah. when I think when I say expense manager, I kind of mean like credit card. Oh, credit cards. Stuff. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, different different verbiage for us. Um, yeah, so we just launched a startup specific credit card uh, last month. Um, so another pain point that we heard a lot from from start, early stage startups was, "Hey, do you guys have a credit card that makes sense for you know somebody who doesn't have credit history that doesn't want to provide a personal guarantee?" Um, you know, because it, it's hard when you're that early to get almost kind of like your introductory lending relationship with a bank. So we created an unsecured, no personal guarantee, no credit history needed um, credit card for early stage startups that's purely based on their deposit balances. Awesome. So, um, you know, for example, if they want a hundred, if they have a hundred thousand dollars in their checking account, they're eligible for up to a twenty thousand dollar credit limit. So the deposits need to be about five times what what uh, their credit limit's going to be. And um, and so you know, we check it on a quarterly basis. So all of a sudden, like we understand things fluctuate in yeah. their checking account. So, you know, one day they may have less and it may drop below that hundred thousand dollars. We're not going to just like cut them off. Um, you yeah. know, we, again, it goes back to that relationship component of yeah. like, let's get on the phone and have a conversation and make sure that. And for the cruise clients, like we're, they're always, they're, they raise venture capital. So they're going to be totally fine on yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And, but yeah, I think I, this is more like the pre C the typically yeah. like, that's where they, you know, because you, you do, you get some that are like, hey, I just need like a $10,000 credit card limit and, and that's it. So. Yeah. But I, the personal guarantee is not having that is huge. I always tell the story, but we were, Vanessa and I were on vacation in, in like 
this is pre baby. So like, you know, five or six, seven years ago. And I remember talking to a, uh, or one of our clients who was shutting the company down. And I just kind of happened to be like, kind of like almost forgot, to, uh, like forgotten to ask. I was like, Hey, do you have any credit card debt? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, is it personally guaranteed? She's like, Oh my God, it is. And it was like 25,000 bucks. Yes. And they were shutting the company down the, tomorrow. And I was like, you need to pay that right now or all that's going to, you know, and, but that's the kind of thing that happens and people get caught it, or they can't get a big enough credit card that they're most people who start companies don't have a lot of money. I mean, I know when I joined Vanessa, we were basically broke, both of us. And it, it was like, wait a second, you're, I don't have enough money for you to give me a good credit card to run the business expenses through it because I don't have a lot of credit history and things like that. Right. So, so that's super beneficial in both those ways. Yeah. I think that's really smart. Yeah. And, and it's utilizing a traditional credit card our our visa commercial plus card. Uh, so they still earn rewards, mm. you know, they're still cash back, you know, it's virtual cards that they need it for their team members. So it has all the traditional components of a, of a regular credit card, just yeah. with, the, you know, it's just kind of how it's underwritten slash not underwritten because it's unsecured. Yeah, that's awesome. Good for you. That's great. Um, and then how does the how does the coverage work like with the relationship? Do is are people assigned a banker or is there is it like, hey, when I have a problem, I call in? Like how does how's all the the high touch yeah. customer service work? Yeah. So, you know, depending on uh their location, they'll get assigned typically one or two people. Uh, mm. as their as their team and those are their people we don't really want we have a 1-800 number of course like every bank does but we want to make sure that they know to come to us first and that yeah. is like, you know not only in regards to hey i forgot my password i can't log in you know that of course that sort of stuff but we also want them to come to us for things that are outside of banking like ecosystem stuff like a lot of times they'll come to us and say hey you know I'm hiring. Do you know a payroll provider that like we can work with or yeah. hey, I need an accounting partner. I'm, I'm looking for something like that. And we'll make introductions, of course, and where we can. And we also have a lot of partners that are part of our what's called banking with benefits that like you guys that are offering some sort of discount to our to our specifically to our clients. So we want to make sure that we're, you know, involved in a lot of different aspects. of That's their. awesome. Yeah. You also know the company, so you can give custom advice, which is really important. You know, you're not going to send them on a wild goose chase or it, that makes a really, really big difference. Yeah. That's great. And the fact that you're serving companies nationally, wherever they are, is really mm -hmm. nice. Cause so, like sometimes some of the other banks who are very kind of um, regional focused, like they, they don't really, they can't serve that company in Michigan or wherever, right? Because they don't have an office there. And so no one, there's no one who actually knows what, knows how to talk to those companies. So that's yeah. really, really cool. I mean, we even work with companies that are moving here from overseas, like the founders mm. maybe still in, you know, the UK or India, and they're going to be a part of a YC and there's, they're opening their accounts here to get started because they're moving. And we understand like, you know, there's different needs for, for founders that are outside the US. So, you know, we, we do work with, you know, founders. I, I love that too. We, and we're seeing more and more companies like that. Um, who are Delaware C cars, but, yeah. but really the founders are in Europe or Australia or South, South America. So that's really great too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I, I can personally attest to like, you guys do a great job. The relationships are real. You're there. You're always there when we need to talk to, some, to somebody. So, and I know integrity wise is really important for us too, you know? And I, and I think one of the other nice things I referenced the SVB crisis a little bit, but like, you know, you and Mike were available during that time. I mean, I think we sent you a bunch of clients during that time. And whenever we had the, that was like maybe the craziest 10 days of my career in a, in a way. And, um, you guys picked up the phone and answered emails and were super helpful. So we really appreciate that. Yeah, no. And we appreciate your partnership as well. And, you know, for us, it's always, we want to make sure that our clients are taken care of. We, we do take it <laughs> seriously. Um, you know, and like I said, for us, it's not necessarily, especially on the early stage side of things, it's not just like a, 12 months, like we just want to get you onboarded and forget your name and stuff. We yeah. want to go with you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I mean, and that is like in some cases or, you know, or you're utilizing a chat bot. It's like, no, we, I want you to know who I am yeah, like, yeah. Comfortable reaching out to me. I want to know who you are because at the end of the day, if you're successful as my client, 
we're successful. That's so totally it, right? You're I so aligned. You. You're completely aligned. Like if they're more successful, it helps you guys too. And so yeah. that, that, I love that. And the same with our business too. It's like, yeah. well, we want to answer those questions because we know it'll help you out. And that that is good for us. That's amazing. Any any uh, good banking horror stories? Like I'm sure it's like us where you have companies coming from another bank or for us in an accounting firm. And you're like, what happened? What did you do? What, what what did they put you on kind of thing? Like, yeah, you seen, I mean, have you seen any like just horrible, horrible things that people should avoid? I mean, again, I think do your due diligence because I think there's been plenty of times where, you know, from credit cards being people be getting shut off because they oh, dropped yeah. below certain limits or something like yeah. that. And we've, you know, had to rush to get them because they had to pay off something um, or, you know, transferring funds from another uh, bank where they're, when they're moving over and not re- realizing that there's fees associated with that on there on the other side of the, the other bank. So, you know, stuff like that, I think, again, it's just doing your due diligence and making sure like the solutions you're picking, like actually support your business now and into the future like i can't stress that enough because again like it's easy to get caught up in what's available now and if you think you're busy as a a pre-seed founder you're going to be even more so when you go to raise your series a so having like the right team behind you is is key i totally agree that's really well said well maybe you could talk about how to reach out how to get in touch with you how to get in touch with bridge bank i mean linkedin email all that kind of stuff yeah absolutely um so Obviously, everybody can reach me. Just, uh, I think maybe Scott, you'll share my email address, but it's kelly.cavilli at bridgebank.com. Um, you can access, you know, more information about our startup program on bridgebank.com uh, startup uh, page. And then obviously LinkedIn, anybody can message me if they have any questions. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kelly. 